Hello, everyone, and welcome to another WSB webinar. My name is Heather Miller, and I'm the Director of Education and Training here at WSB. And I'm really excited to have everybody here today. We're going to talk about the new program that we're going to be able to start offering, the Accessibility Professional Program. So as anybody on here who's blind or visually impaired knows, accessibility is something that is hugely important to us. It makes the difference in being able to access information or not access information, a difference between being able to do something independently or have to rely on sighted help to complete a task. And fortunately, a lot of companies, businesses, um, web developers, and really all sorts of um, different industries are starting to pay a lot more attention to accessibility and not just making things accessible after the fact, but they're really wanting to bring accessibility in on the forefront of their design, whether it's web design, May product design, or anything like that. So what Join we've the meeting. here at WSC is that we get a lot of requests to help people look at products, to look at websites and let them know what the accessibility is like. And the reason they want us to do those tasks is because the people here, the people who are blind and visually impaired, are the people with that firsthand lived experience. And so this is creating a whole industry of employment opportunities for people to be able to work in the field of accessibility. But in addition, companies and businesses are actually looking for that person themselves to have that firsthand lived experience of being and having to rely on software and technology to help you access information. So we have developed a new program here at WSB, the Accessibility Professional Program, and that's going to help people fill these employment needs that are out there. So people coming into the Accessibility Professional Program will be required to learn a lot about technology because it's kind of hard to be able to tell someone if something is accessible or not and how they can fix it if you're not familiar with the technology yourself. So similar to our students who are in the Assistive Technology Instructor Program, clients in the Accessibility Professional Program will study all kinds of accessibility software. They will be required to become certified in JAWS, NVDA, and Zoom Text Fusion. They will also study voiceover with iOS, talk back with Androids, and the built-in accessibility features of the Windows operating system. <laughs> and excuse me a minute, my allergies are getting the best of me here in Arkansas on this beautiful day. Um, but like I said, those certifications will be required of students going through this program. And that's just going to help prove that you have the technology experience and background to be able to provide good um, recommendations and good reports for any employers or clients or businesses that you're working with. Then you'll get the chance to kind of go off into kind of the more theoretical aspects of accessibility and diversity, inclusion, equity, and accessibility just in general. So in doing that, Clients are going to be able to study the different philosophies and models of disability. Um, they're going to be able to study universal design for learning and universal design as it applies to the built environment as well as the online environment um, and just day to day products. Is there usability built in from the start? Can we make devices that are accessible on the front end that don't require? accommodation or specialized software to use, kind of similar to um, if you buy an iPhone, for instance, off the shelf these days, it has voiceover and Zoom built into it, the screen reader and magnification software. So technically that is a mainstream device, even though it actually has accessibility features built throughout it. And that's exactly what this program and the work that graduates of this program will be doing is trying to support, support the development of products that anyone with any sort of disability can use straight out of the box, directly off the shelf without need for special accommodations 
or special adjustments to be made to the product. Kind of those barriers are just broken down on the very front end. Kind of the same with websites. Anybody who has ever tried to use JAWS or NVDA or any other type of screen reader before knows what it's like when you get on a website and you can't access different elements of the website. Maybe the buttons aren't labeled, maybe links aren't labeled, maybe there's no headings on the web page to help you with navigation, or there's a lot of graphics or images on the web page without alt text. So you have no idea what that image or graphic is or what it's trying to say. And it means that you can't access all the information that's actually on the web page. So that's what accessibility professionals are going to be focused on is learning the technology and the software that allows things to be made accessible, that allows products to be used by any number of users despite their disability or despite any assistance that they may need. Um, and so that's developing it and bringing it in on the front end, which is great because it means instead of new products coming out that we have to wait for somebody to make those adjustments to, they're just ready to go right from the start. And that's what people are looking for these days. And that's exactly what we're hoping to provide through this program. So we're really excited that we've got a couple of companies that we are going to be working with to provide some of our clients um, real world work experience while they're going through this program. Um, everything from participating in usability testing, um, looking at websites and writing reports to save about the accessibility of the website, um, recommend changes that need to be made or just give feedback on how the website works with a screen reader. Um, also consulting with companies about different software that they can use or just simply the barriers that blind or low vision people have with accessing this product or this information or this website and be able to make recommendations to them on how they can fix that and how they can make changes in their development process that will make this device accessible or this software accessible for users once it hits the mainstream market. Another big part of this program is going to be learning the legislative and regulatory frameworks that apply to disability. So we're all familiar with the Americans with Disabilities Act, but there are a lot of other laws, treaties, and things of that nature, even on the international level, that address accessibility and address access to information and mandate that information must be made accessible. And these laws and others that are coming up through the legislatures and through the court just like it are actually making it to where people must make certain products accessible, certain websites accessible. One of the companies that we're going to be working with and giving our students access to projects throughout this program um, does a lot of work reviewing federal government websites. We've got some students right now who are going to be participating in a study about the accessibility of the vote.gov website and what other information that these people would like to see on the website if they're a blind voter that's trying to find out information about the ballot or where they can find accessible voting machines. And so it's really giving WSB and our clients and our graduates the opportunity to participate in the very thing that allows us to live our lives independently um, just right from the front end. And that's really exciting both for us and for our clients. And for the first time, we're seeing a entire job market that is looking for employees that are blind and visually impaired. Because like I said at the beginning, they're wanting to have that firsthand lived experience um, by someone who uses a screen reader on a daily basis or who has to rely on assistive technology devices on a daily basis to bring their input, their experience, and their expertise to the table to make accessibility something that is really put into the development process. Um, this program is going to be offered both online and on campus. 
However, I am very excited also to announce that for students who are interested in coming on campus, um, as you all know, we offer a variety of life skills and independent living training, as well as our vocational training. And those who come on campus will have the opportunity to go through that training if there's any areas where they feel like they need some assistance or a little bit of brushing up. And then when you get admitted into your vocational program, if you're doing the accessibility professional program, all of those clients will be provided with a laptop from Computers for the Blind that they will be able to keep after their graduation and will be able to use that laptop here while they're on campus to work on their projects, to communicate um, with any business or development team that they might be working with, um, to be able to do meetings over Zoom or any other meeting platform during the course of their program. Um, and we work with companies um, that are in different time zones. And so that will give clients on campus the ability to have access to a computer throughout their entire program and to be able to do things off hours if they need to, to meet with a client. Um, so we're very excited to be able to offer that opportunity to students. Definitely check out the program on our website. We have a lot more information listed there at wsblind.org and information about all of the rest of our vocational programs is also on that website. So if you tune into this webinar, but after everything you've heard, you're thinking maybe that's not the program for me, I would definitely encourage you to get online and check out some of our other vocational training opportunities. Um, but we do have a lot of hope in this program. I think that it's going to be a great opportunity for our clients to come in, get vocational training in a way that they are immediately going to be able to turn around and contribute significantly to the workforce and find jobs where people are actually looking for them to fill this job demand. And that's an opportunity that we haven't necessarily had before. And it's one that's really, really exciting when it comes to our clients and being able to find a career that they can enjoy, that they can do. Um, a lot of these positions I would anticipate would be remote, um, depending on if you kind of do like freelance contract work after you're done or if you started going to work for a certain company. Um, but the options for remote employment are going to be there. And it really gives those of us in the blind and visually impaired community a chance to have a real impact on the world around us. And for every struggle that we've had individually, trying to find things that are accessible, trying to find accommodations, trying to make things work, around the fact that we can't see, um, getting to contribute to that on the front end just means a very, very different world for people with visual impairments that are gonna come along behind us. So at this time, um, I would like to introduce to you our instructor for this program. He is a graduate of our online assistive technology instructor program, um, but his name is Calvin Thompson. He's based out of Raleigh, North Carolina, and I'm happy to have Calvin on here today just to kind of introduce himself and say hello. Hello, hello. Um... Calvin Thompson here. I'm I'm actually in Charlotte, North Carolina, but that's all right, Heather. We won't hold that again. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm I'm um, based out of Charlotte, North Carolina, and I'm I'm, I'm very excited about um, this opportunity to be the program instructor for this uh, for particular program. I was introduced to um, um, this program and the the the, the accessibility professional world last fall by uh, Heather and Eric Yarberry. And, and ever since then, I've just been uh, doing my research and, and looking into it and, and just been proud and excited that there's finally a way where um, blind and visually impaired people can have more of an impact. And, and also, I, I feel that the more impact we can have, the more that we can start to see uh, change in change for us as blind and visually impaired people. I, I think that there, there already has been a lot of change, but as we all know, we, we still have a ways to go before uh, 
we we can say that things are equally accessible and and and, and things like that. And I, I so I feel like this this program is a long way and a, a a big step toward that. And I'm very excited to be a part of it. So thank you. Thanks, Calvin. So that's all the basic information about this program. I'm assuming there's probably a lot of questions, so I'll be happy to start taking those at this time. And you can feel free to leave your questions in the chat or you can just unmute yourself. And if there's anyone on our Facebook Live who has a question, just feel free to leave a comment and we'll get to it. Hi, Heather. Um, this is Jerry Harris in Paragold, Arkansas. And I was just curious, how long of a program is this going to be? So this is going to, that's a great question. I should have talked about that on the front end. Um, this is going to be a nine to 12 month program, similar to our assistive technology instructor program. I would anticipate that the first half of the program will be sent learning those um, screen reader softwares and magnification softwares that I was talking about and kind of getting those initial certifications out of the way. And then the last half of the program will be more of that theoretical um, legislative framework aspect of the course materials. Um, but that's also when the students in that program will be able to take on projects. Um, working with some of these companies that we're partnering with and being able to get that real world experience um, before they graduate the program. Hi, this is Tawny. Um, I was curious, so what is the overlap with the web accessibility program? Like, if you get the, the um, this program we're talking about, does do they overlap at all or what's the difference? So this, this program is the accessibility program. I would say it's not, there's definitely going to be a focus on web accessibility, but it's not just web accessibility. It's kind of um, accessibility across a wider kind of, I guess, gamut of different products. So a lot of it is going to be web-based because that's primarily um, where people are kind of starting with their accessibility within their businesses and companies is making those websites accessible. But we're also going to be studying things like usability testing, um, document remediation, and things of that nature, just to kind of have a generalized and well-developed accessibility professional. Um, if there's a specific area that a client might be interested in going into, um, whether it's web accessibility or specific type of design accessibility or even the document remediation, there are um, certifications for that that would go kind of beyond our program. But in the course of your career, um, as you kind of built up that experience and things of that nature that you might want to look into um, later on down the road. A lot of those certifications, though, do require anywhere from three to five years experience working in the industry. Um, and so that's why those are not a part of our original program, but it's definitely um, a step in that direction if that's where you're wanting to head. Okay, so this one would prepare you for the, the IAAP certification. And then I know you guys have the other program that just got started with the web. So that would be then the next step after that, probably then Does that makes sense. Um, no, there's not going to be like a separate web accessibility specialist program. It's just all kind of wrapped up in this one accessibility professional program. Okay. So they got merged. The one that, okay. I, I yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Sounds good. Cool. <laughs> yeah. In developing the program, we realized that rather than specializing in one specific area, um, having that more broad base of knowledge would actually help people as they're starting out in the industry and expose them to a variety of different um, accessibility, I guess, topics um, that they could be familiar with. And then um, they could kind of choose what direction they wanted to go to from there. Okay, awesome. That sounds great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. well, we have a bunch of questions in the chat and on Facebook, so I'm just going to ask those. Sure. Um, 
what is the online uh, CMS you use? Uh, Moodle, Blackboard, Canva? We use Canvas for our online learning management system. Okay, and then we've got two questions from Ashley in the chat. Um, Ashley, with the Helen Keller National Center here, is there a list somewhere of the credentials slash certifications the student will achieve during this program? Yes, um, it is listed on the C schedule that we send out. Um, it's also listed in the course description that you can find on the website, or if anybody needs an email copy, I would be happy to send that out as well. Um, but the certifications that are required for graduation are going to be the JAWS, NVDA, and Zoom Text Fusion. And um, for everyone in the Zoom meeting, we have the uh, webpage is in the chat. Um, so you can definitely learn more about the program there. Um, and then Ashley has another question. Uh, would this program lend itself well with a deaf participant using a braille display or would this program be more friendly to people using people using hearing to access the products, web, et cetera? Um, I would say that it would definitely be possible to access with a braille display if someone was deaf. Um, a lot of the website testing is going to kind of rest on does the screen reader identify the element as what it's supposed to be. So like a link, a graphic, a heading, a table, a combo box, something of that nature. So as long as the braille display is able to give that information from the screen reader, then yes, I don't think it would be a problem because they're getting the same end result. Great. And we have uh, another question in the chat here um, from Taylor. Uh, I may seem like an overachiever here, but what if I'm interested in the assistive technology instructor program as well as this one? I've attended the CADIS webinar at one point. Also, I understand we are supposed to get certified in JAWS, Zoom Text, and NVDA. What if I am already certified in JAWS and Zoom Text? Would that shave off any amount of time? Yes, if you hold current certifications in JAWS and NVDA or JAWS and Zoom Text, that would definitely um, shave off at least that portion of the program. Um, I guess as far as the crossover between the Assistive Technology Instructor Program and the Accessibility Professional Program really would be that. So if you were going into the Assistive Technology Instructor Program, even if you have your DAWs, certification or any of the other certifications coming in because that is a teaching program you would still have to go through the course material because you're not just learning how to use the software but you're learning how to actually break it down and teach it to somebody else in the accessibility professional program we're not so concerned about you being able to turn around and teach that material as much as just can you use it to the extent that you can give, you know, a, a well backed up opinion about whether or not something is accessible. So for the accessibility program, I would say yes, current certifications will take time off of what it would take for you to complete the program. For the assistive technology instructor program, no, it would not. Um, but if you did want to do both programs, obviously that would be up to you and your vocational rehabilitation counselor as far as what they are willing to support. But there would be some crossover between the curriculum that would be able to be um, probably worked out to where you weren't at least doing everything twice. This is Heather and I have a question about when does the program start? And what is the workload hours per day schedule type thing? So the program officially launched on April 3rd of this year. So it's out there um, and we're, we've are we got one person in the program right now. I've got another two that are getting ready to start and then we're just waiting on authorizations for some others. So it is up and running. Um, as far as the weekly and hourly requirements, um, if you're on campus, it's going to be 40 hours a week because on campus students go to class from 8 to 4.30 every day. 
Um, in the online program, you're not necessarily going to have that hourly requirement because the online program does permit you to work um, more at your own, I wouldn't say speed, but at least schedule. So if you're trying to do that program around a current job or around family responsibilities or something like that, you have the freedom to do that, but you do want to make sure you keep your rate of getting coursework done um, up to where you'll be able to finish in time. Um, so online, you don't necessarily have to go 8 to 4.30 on campus, you do, but um, online, you do kind of have to make sure that you're able to set a schedule and maintain it for yourself just so that you don't get behind. Uh, so that kind of leads Heather, into this other... is... Sorry. Uh, I was just going to say, this is Jerry Harris. I was going to ask about the online program. Um, if we if we chose to do the online program, how accessible would Mr. Calvin be to us that, that we're doing the online program? So always by email, definitely. Um, and how it will be set up as far as weekly meetings and things like that are going to be decided kind of once there's multiple students in the program. Um, so that I know in like the assistive technology instructor program, there are some weekly meetings. Those times have been adjusted throughout the months to kind of fit with the schedules of the people that are currently going through the program. Um, so there's not like a dedicated meeting time at this very moment, but you'll always be able to send an email and expect to get a response. Um, just maybe not right that minute if he's busy with somebody else, but definitely um, I'd say within his 24 to 48 hour time period, um, you'll also be getting feedback through Canvas on assignments that are being completed from him. So that will give you some opportunity to kind of do independent work in reviewing maybe things you need to work on or comments that have been given on an assignment. And then usually it's as, as you need, you kind of go forward from there. If you, if you need a study session, if you need a meeting, send them an email, y'all can get something on the calendar. Um, but really in the online program, you kind of get to ask for what you need instead of being you know required to be present once a day for an hour. Okay, thank you. Um, so we've got a few more questions in the chat. Uh, that kind of answers um, uh, Natasha's question of, is the program full-time or uh, could a student go through part-time if needed? Um, kind of already answered that, Heather see here um the total cost of the online program so that's going to be listed in the fee schedule the tuition i want to say off the top of my head is right around 2650 a month um and then there will be certification fees and book fees as well. Um, there is only one book that's needed for the program, so that's helpful. And then the certification fees for the JAWS, Zoom text, and, and VDA. Um, so it's the same tuition, whether you're online or on campus. Obviously, if you're on campus, there's also room and board um, if you're staying in the dorms, but the tuition will remain the same and it will it's hard to give a total without knowing if there's going to be the addition of room and board or if you finish the program in, you know, nine months, that's only nine months of tuition versus the 12 months. Uh, and if you did um, sign up for this uh, webinar ahead of time, um, we will be sending a, an email after this with a recording and that will also include uh, the fees for um, the program as well. And if you would like me to add you to that list, you can just leave your email in the chat or message directly. Are there any other questions? All right. Well, I really appreciate everybody being here today. If you come up with any questions after the fact, please feel free to send us an email. You can also reach out 
to our director of admissions and recruitment at training at wsblind.org. Um, she'll be able to answer a lot of questions for you too, or if there's something she can't answer, she'll be forwarding it to me and I'll get back with you as soon as I possibly can. But thank you all for joining us. Um, I hope you found this information exciting as much as we do. And I look forward to hopefully seeing a lot of applications for this program come in.